What's going on there folks? Good evening, uh, late evening here in Northern California, April 25th, a date 2021, 9.30 p.m. West Coast time here in California and the latest quake out here, a 3.3 earthquake striking out here around the West Coast region. This activity comes after uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity in the Lake Tahoe region as well as another large 6.4 earthquake out in the uh, Pacific Ocean. Of course, Missy Mimi's co uh, covered that a little bit uh, on her update. I appreciate her jumping in once in a while and doing a, uh, a weekend update when she has time. I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, here is that latest information that uh, came in on the 6.4 earlier. Struck out there just uh, to the west, southwest of the Tonga region. This is a little bit uh, in that same area where we've seen the other 6.4, 6.5. Oh, a few days ago now. We can pop it up with that one right there. It's going to be this yellow circle indicating that older 6.5. So quite a bit of deep movement here in this region of the uh, just uh, west of the Tonga Trench area. A lot of definitely a lot of deep earthquake activity. That 6.5 was uh, pretty deep in itself, 301 kilometers. This 6.4, a little bit less of a magnitude, a little bit more shallower, but still pretty deep. 234 kilometers uh, below the surface for that earthquake. Since then, not a whole lot of significant movement. We did have a 5.2, a little bit further west, a little bit more shallow quaking over here, um, stretching up to the uh, um, Solomon Islands area. Actually, they haven't seen uh, too much activity yet, uh, but it is kind of working its way towards that region, I, I believe. Uh, and some more activity around the Indonesia area uh, stretching up there a little bit, uh, nothing big. A couple four pointers, and uh, of course, even then, some deep movement going on uh, there in that area as well. I was out storm chasing today here in Northern California. Uh, thunderstorms are still going on pretty good in the mountains, but uh, out here around Chico, California, we had some pretty good, uh, pretty good cells popping up there with some uh, almost penny size hail. Not anything big, according, you know, like as like baseballs and tennis balls and all that stuff but uh, those things hurt a little bit when they're falling out of the sky uh, but needless to say seen some uh, pretty good rotation i thought for sure we were going to see a uh, tornado we've seen a couple small funnel clouds spin up and then disappear uh, but uh, lots of lightning it was pretty fun local local storm chase days are always fun we'll take what we can get here in california here's the all magnitudes uh, map of the hawaii islands the big island showing a little bit of movement away from the area that we've always watched here to the southeast flank and around the Kilauea volcano and Mauna Loa. We're seeing a little bit of further movement to the west off the uh, west coast here. 2.6, uh, 6.7 6 kilometers below the surface and another one 3.3 uh, looks like it's at the surface or at least zero kilometers. Uh, so kind of watching that activity. Uh, of course, this is uh, all new after that 6.4 that struck today. Uh, a little bit of hot spot activity kicking up here in the West Coast region. We'll go ahead and check that out uh, super quick. Uh, first of all, we'll jump into the Lake Tahoe area. I know Miss Mimi's covered this a little bit. Uh, I don't know if there was this many earthquakes there when she did this update, but we're looking at uh, 21 earthquakes in the Lake Tahoe area. She did discuss a little bit about the North uh, Tahoe fault system and the past historical seismic activity. Uh, I was reading somewhere myself that uh, 7.0 earthquake uh, has been uh, measured out here in the past at least 10,000 years. Uh, and um, a 7.0 in this area of the lake, or I think in any other area of the lake, would produce a massive tsunami uh, and would not want to be around anywhere along the shores of South Lake Tahoe or anywhere in this vicinity if a 7.0 does strike. Uh, not saying a 7.0 is striking, but um, historical seismic activity. They go back, you know, look at certain uh, rock structures and whatnot uh, of the land and uh, whatever geologists do when they, when they, you know, figure out past historical quakes. And uh, they're, they're pretty well convinced that a uh, 7.0 has occurred within this region uh, within the last seven, seven uh, w within the last 10,000 years, I should say. But uh, smaller ones are capable within the intervals of, uh, I believe, about three to four thousand years there was a 3.7 that struck 7.5 miles south um, below the surface of Lake Tahoe below the lake 
directly below the lake. Uh, not for sure if anybody felt this earthquake out here. It's impossible. Looks like actually quite a few people did feel it. Uh, and I'm sure it's all uh, up around the Sierra Nevadas there. Tahoma, uh, Tahoe Vista, Glenbo Glenbrook in Nevada, Tahoe City, Carson City even felt that uh, 3.7. Quite a few folks there reported feeling that. So it's uh, uh, definitely a, a, a quake that was felt by many people out there. And considering the depth of that earthquake, kind of surprised. 7.5 kilometers. Looking at this other activity here, most of the aftershock activity, because I believe that's what it is. If we were seeing, um, say, uh, you know, 3.7, 3.3, 4.1, uh, another 3, another 4.5, if we're starting to look at moditudes, uh, moditudes, molt magnitudes going up, then I would suggest, you know, something's going on here. We may be uh, looking at the, the four quakes or a swarm of a much larger quake here at Lake Tahoe, but I don't believe we're looking at uh, uh, that right now. Um, of course, there has been quite a bit of buildup out here along the West Coast for quite some time. Uh, yes, there has been some earthquake activity around the Bay Area, nothing major. Up here in the Calaveras Fault System, we've seen a little back-to-back -back earthquake activity around Morgan Hill, 3.6 followed up quickly by a 2.0 and a 0.9. Um, I believe these are just some aftershocks there, but it shows you the general uh, pressure and whatnot along the West Coast, and this has been ongoing for quite some time here. Uh, West Coast has definitely been uh, feeling uh, quite a bit of pressure. No major releases out here. Of course, we look at pressure um, in terms of um, certain areas, inland, the Inner Mountain West region, uh, gives a pretty good idea of potential pressure that's building up out here along the West Coast, including the tremor that takes place here along the uh, Cascadia subduction zone that's been ongoing for quite some time I don't believe uh, let's see what it looks like I haven't even seen it yet tonight looks like it's well <clears throat> excuse me 349 epicenters of trimmer along, along the Cascadia and looks like we're getting a little bit further migration to the south <coughs> excuse me into the central coast of Oregon not central Oregon central coast uh, and now down more so it looks like down along the southern part of the uh, coastline and ultimately, this gives you a good idea, indication that, uh, well, if you got slippage going on, right? If there's slippage going on, that means there's buildup of pressure up here along the lock section of the Cascadia. Um, so that's a good indication there of continued pressure along the Pacific Northwest. We haven't really seen too much in the way of um, surface quakes up here. A little bit of movement, some microquakes out here near Mount St. Helens, nothing big. And some movement up here along the Seattle Fault as well. This is a fault system to watch very closely. Uh, this right here could be uh, uh, worse for the Seattle area than the Cascadia. Especially if you have a, a 7.5 magnitude, which is capable up here. Uh, I believe it's 7 to 7.5 along the Seattle Fault System. Um, geologists looked at this in the past and uh, claimed that this could be potentially a little bit more deadlier. Um, compared to like a, I'm not saying a 9.0 over here is going to be um, all rainbows and unicorns in Seattle, um, but it it definitely shake them up for sure and create massive havoc. Uh, but a 7.5 directly underneath Seattle uh, could be just as damaging, if not more. Uh, West Coast region, uh, like I say, not a whole lot going on, folks. There was this little earthquake up here near the geysers. It looks like it just happened, the 3.3 Anderson Springs. We've seen some uh, further activity in the upper three level uh, last week. Uh, Bay Area has seen some further movement as well, but uh, overall, um, you know, just a couple sporadic uh, hit and miss uh, minor earthquakes around the region. No major salt and sea swarming going on. In fact, Southern California looks eerily quiet for the most part right now. Ridgecrest activity diminishing as well. Just. Uh, Kind of watching this area up here, folks. I just, you know, it's this. Is, I believe it's all just aftershocks, um, but we'll have to watch the migration of this. See if this happens to uh, uh, go further up and down. Either, you know, any specific fault structures up here. Right now, it looks like it's right there at the southern end of the North Tahoe Fault structure, or at least in between that and the Incline Village Fault. Of course, Sierra Nevada Mountains uh, are, are huge, right? And they're built up obviously of pressure. Um, so seeing earthquakes and whatnot uh, on give, any given time are is pretty typical. It's just a fact of life, and it uh, 
a fact of uh, how the earth and plate tectonics work. Uh, what else we got here, folks? Globally, not a whole lot of movement. Uh, Chile area around the Andes, seeing a little bit of earthquake activity for 5.4 uh, in Peru area, the Peru region, and some also uh, looks like some other small quakes here, 4.3 and a uh, deeper quake into Argentina, 4.2 at 205 kilometers into the subduction zone area right there. So uh, other than that, there's not a whole lot of movement going on, folks. I mean, there's uh, there is, but there's nothing major to look at at the moment besides this 6.4 and the movement there along the west coast. Nothing really showing any heightened earthquake activity. So we'll see uh, what becomes of all this movement there in the uh, Tonga region. I still think that we're due up here, folks, and I keep saying it every update video, it's just, it's been all too quiet. Today, last week, the week before that, the week before that, you know, just a couple measly 4.0s up here is not enough to release the strain that's been building up here uh, for quite some time. Uh, what else we got? Trimmer, we checked out Trimmer. Let's see if Yellowstone's popping off yet. Are you, are you popping off? Oh, there's that six pointer. Um, 6.4 showing up right there. This looks like kind of like a localized earthquake. That could potentially be a localized. Uh, it is showing up. No, uh, maybe not. Looks like maybe that's some stuff going on uh, over there in uh, Idaho. Idaho, we didn't really cover too much. There's not a whole lot going on, but uh, there was a couple mid threes, or at least one mid three showing up in the Sawtooth Fault System area in Idaho. Uh, that could potentially throw uh, throw up, show up here. It's late in the uh, Yellowstone area. I had, I had fun today, storm chasing. It was pretty. It was a blast. Let me tell you, circulation right above your head spinning is awesome. I'm not gonna lie. That's what. Uh, that's what I live for. Weather and uh, and of course life in general. Right. The Earth has a lot to offer. That's for sure. Lots of fun out there. All right, guys. Um, I am out of here. Hope everyone has a good night. Um, and uh, we'll keep you guys updated if something else changes. Peace out.